I am presenting Union Gospel Press's Sunday School Lesson Number 5, Sunday, June 30th, 2024. The lesson is entitled, Ruth Marries Boaz. Lesson text comes from Ruth, chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. Related scriptures are Ruth 3, 1 through 18, 4, 11 through 22, Deuteronomy 25, 7 through 10, Jeremiah 32, 6 through 15. The place is Bethlehem. The time is between 1120 and 1130 BC. This week, we conclude the book of Ruth. Our lesson text challenges us to obey God from the heart and gives us a clear picture of the redeeming work of Christ. Today's aim, facts, to learn how Boaz took over the task of the family redeemer when the first man would not do the job. Principle, to show that God requires obedience from the heart, not merely from a sense of duty. Application, to teach that sometimes what is required of us may go beyond what seems possible, but that we should step forward in obedience and do it. Illustrating the lesson, both Ruth and Boaz cared for others. They set an example for us to follow, for they illustrate God's great care for his own. Practical points. One, we should do our work for God in a way that is proper and timely. Ruth 4, 1 through 2. Two, honesty should be the rule of every Christian presentation. Ruth 4, 3 through 4, Ephesians 4, 25. 3. Wise is the person who listens carefully before speaking. Ruth 4, 5 through 6, Proverbs 18, 13. 4. Caring for others is seldom without cost to oneself. Ruth 4, 6, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, Philippians 2, 3 through 8. Five, the wise person gathers witnesses to all important public decisions. Ruth 4, 7 through 10, Matthew 18, 16. Six, the Christian should do his godly duty without reservation. Ruth 4, 9 through 10, Colossians 3, 33, 3, 23. Golden text. If thou will redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee, and I am after thee. Ruth 4.4. 4. Today we have two lesson outlines. The first is Boaz proposition, Ruth 4, 1 through 6. The second is Boaz's accusation, Ruth 4, 7 through 10. Introduction. The book of Acts describes a beautiful situation, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. 432, 34 through 35. What a wonderful example of believers caring for one another. Some had more material goods than others, and some apparently were very poor. Those with plenty made certain that those with little had enough. What made this even better was that this was voluntary sharing and not something commanded by the leaders of the church. God put it in the hearts of his people to care for one another. It was a living demonstration of the love God's children should have for each other as Boaz had for Ruth. Boaz's Proposition, Ruth 4, 1. Then went Boaz up to the gate and set him down there and behold the kinsman of whom Boaz spoke came by unto whom he said 
Ho, such a one. Turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. Verse 2. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. Verse 3. And he said unto the kinsmen, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land which was of our brother Ahimelech. Verse 4. And I thought to advise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Verse 5. Then Boaz then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the land of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Verse 6. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar mine own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. A meeting of the town council. Ruth 4, 1 through 2. Ruth describes what happened between Boaz and Ruth that led to his pursuit of becoming her permanent protector and husband. Naomi had shown Ruth how to indicate to Boaz that she desired this relationship. Boaz was flattered that Ruth wanted this. His response was, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether rich, poor, or rich. Verse 10. Ruth's appeal was for Boaz to become her kinsman redeemer. Boaz informed Ruth that there was one kinsman more closely related to her than he was, and that person would have to be given the first opportunity to perform the duty, verses 12 through 13. The very next morning, Boaz began the process of obtaining the right to become the kinsman redeemer for Ruth. It was a legal transaction that required the witness of some of the elders of the city. Such legal matters were usually carried out in the gates of the city. Boaz went to the city gate of Bethlehem the next morning and waited for the other kinsmen to appear. When he did, Boaz invited him to stop and sit down with him. He then gathered ten of the city's elders and asked them to sit down too. This was now a man's world where a public decision was to be made on an important matter that profoundly affected the women who had brought it to this point. The scene was set for the legal procedure. Boaz had spent the night guarding his grain, Ruth 3, 7, and 14. So this legal process took him away from his normal duties. He was a man of his word, however, so he immediately did what he had promised Ruth, verse 13. The matter before him was now urgent. Ruth had specifically requested that he become her redeemer. I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman, verse 9. She referred to herself as his handmaid, revealing a completely submissive attitude toward him. Earlier, Boaz had pronounced a blessing upon Ruth, mentioning that she had placed herself under the wings of God, 2.12. The figure of speech indicated protection and shelter, just as the wings of a mother bird protect her young ones. In Ruth's request for Boaz to become her redeemer, she was asking him to take her, his maid servant, under his wing of protection and provision. It was a clear request that he understood immediately. A redemption proposal, Ruth 4, 3 through 4. Leviticus 25, 23 through 25 explains what Boaz was trying to do. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, for ye are strangers and sojourners with me. And in all the land of your possession ye shall grant a redemption for the land. 
if thy brother be waxen poor and have sold away some of his possessions, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. The piece of property in question once belonged to Elimelech. Naomi had become the owner of her husband's property and probably because of her poverty-stricken position was being forced to sell it. It evidently had not produced any kind of income for her, perhaps because an older woman would not be able to work the land by herself. It was the kind of society where men were dominant and women remained in submissive and less public roles. Owning a piece of property, therefore, had not helped Naomi with the financial needs she and Ruth had encountered. She apparently had no other options. However, the land could be redeemed by a near kinsman, and that would keep the property in the family as God intended. As a matter of fact, when property like this was sold outside the family, it reverted back to them in the year of Jubilee every 50th year, Leviticus 25, 8-16. This is what is meant by the land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, verse 23. Boaz explained the situation to this unnamed kinsman, saying that since he was a closer relative than Boaz, he had the first right to redeem the land. Boaz made certain that this relative understood that a legal transaction was taking place. He referred to the witnesses he had gathered for this occasion. Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people, Ruth 4.4. 4. Jeremiah 32, 16-15 explains a similar situation in Jeremiah's day when he redeemed the land of his cousin. In that case, too, everything was done in the presence of witnesses, giving finality to the transaction. Boaz was serious about this matter and handled it by the details of the law. Upon hearing the proposition, the unnamed relative said that he would redeem the property. He apparently thought that it would be to his advantage to have it, perhaps for additional income for himself. Boaz was probably expecting this response, but he was ready with more information about the proposal. The Kinsman Inability to Redeem, Ruth 4, 5-6 it is somewhat unclear how Boaz managed to present the rest of the situation the way he did. He seemed to be saying the kinsman would be responsible to fulfill the, the leveret marriage law. This can be seen in the phrase to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Deuteronomy 25, 5 through 6 explains, If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child. The wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother, which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. In this way, the family name did not die just because the husband did. In order for Elimelech's name to continue with his sons both already dead, he would have to come through his daughter-in-law, Ruth, who had been married to Malad. Boaz therefore linked Ruth with Naomi and explained that if the kinsman redeemed the property from Naomi, he would also have to buy it from Ruth and take her as his wife in order to perpetuate Elimelech's name. There is no explicit statement in scripture linking Leveret marriage to the laws of redemption, but it is possible that the local tradition or law did specify this kind of arrangement. Boaz's approach in this entire matter might have caused the other kinsmen to be temporarily confused about the situation. Whatever he was thinking made him decide that he could not afford to do that. Maybe he shielded away from supporting both Naomi and Ruth 
or maybe he was afraid that his inheritance would be lessened for his own children. What originally seemed to be a financial benefit to him now appeared to be a liability instead. So he refused to go ahead with the redemption. In front of the witnesses Boaz had gathered, this kinsman relinquished his right to redeem the property. His response now was, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Ruth 4, 6. He not only claimed he could not do it, but also told Boaz that he could proceed without with redeeming it himself. This gave Boaz a clear opening for redeeming the property since he was the next relative in line for doing so. Boaz's acquisition. Verse 7. Now this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning challenging, changing for to confirm all things. A man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor, and this was a testimony in Israel, verse 8. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe, verse 9. And Boaz said unto the elders and to all the people, Ye are witnesses this day that I have brought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilion's and Malon's of the hand of Naomi. Verse 10. Moreover, Ruth the Moabites, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place. Ye are witnesses this day. Sealing the agreement, Ruth 4, 7 through 8. When the nearer kinsman gave up his right to redeem Naomi's property, he took off a sandal and handed it to Boaz. The removal of a sandal was part of a legal transaction in ancient Israel, Deuteronomy 25, 8-10. through 10. It, it would parallel the modern custom of in concluding a transaction by signing a document or handing over a set of keys. By handing over his shoe, the close relative was symbolically handing over his right to walk on the land that was being sold. The custom apparently had been dis discontinued before the book of Ruth was written because the author referred to it as the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing for, the, for to confirm all things, Ruth 4.7. How long it had been since the practice had been observed is not stated, but the author was aware that readers might not have been familiar with it. In the Leveret Law, in Deuteronomy 25, 5 through 10, there is also reference to the removal of a sandal. In this case, when the brother of a dead man was supposed to take the widow and have a child to perpetuate the name of the deceased, the one who refused to do so had his sandal removed by the widow, then who will then spit in his face. This was the humiliation of the man who refused to be responsible for the continuation of his brother's name. It was then said of him, and his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that have his shoe loosed. Verse 10, although the situation in Ruth 4 is not identical to the Leveret Law of Deuteronomy 25, a legal transaction took place. The action of removing a sandal was viewed by the witnesses as confirmation and would be remembered by them if any question arose in the future. When this near kinsman removed his sandal, he symbolically transferred the right of ownership to Boaz who could now freely walk on his new property and claim it as his own. It was no longer the right of the other kinsmen to walk on that property in that way. He had relinquished that right. The view of ownership is seen in what God said to Joshua when Israel entered Canaan. Every place that they that the sole of your feet shall tread upon that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses, Joshua 1, 3. 
in Psalm 60, when God was speaking of his ownership of certain nations, he said, over Edom, will I cast out my shoe, verse 8. The transaction that took place in the gate of Bethlehem that day gave Boaz the freedom to pursue his plans of becoming Ruth's protector, provider, and husband. Witnessing the transaction, Ruth 4, 9 through 10, Boaz wanted to be certain that the elders witnessing this event understood what they were seeing. He began and ended this declaration with exactly the same words. Ye are witnesses this day. He spelled out precisely the property involved, namely that which had once belonged to Elimelech, Chilion, and Malon, and that it was Naomi from whom he was acquiring it. These details would make absolutely certain that any future witnesses were covered. Any future questions were covered. The witness of this transaction by 10 elders was a safeguard for Boaz. It was most likely that all 10 of them would forget. They were two, there were two events for them to remember from that day. First was the transaction of ownership of the property. Second was the acquisition of Ruth as Boaz's wife. It is in verse 10 that we learn for the first time which man Ruth had been married to, namely Malon. When Boaz spoke of not letting the name of the dead be cut off, he referred primarily to Malon. He directly also also to Malon's father, Elimelech. It was sufficient in that culture that a family name not be broken off. That is probably one of the reasons we read so many gen gen genealogies in the Bible. The primary purpose of the Levite law was the reputation of a family name. Boaz would be continuing the name of those in his family who had died. In, in reiterating this to the witnessing elders, he confirmed the importance of the actions he had taken that day and the importance of their witness. This was a joyful occasion as seen in the responses that followed Boaz's actions. The people gathered in the gate of Bethlehem, along with the witnessing elders, all rejoiced together. All of them were eager to acclaim that they had witnessed the transaction that day. The writer never, th never theologizes on the story he was telling, yet he may have wanted to suggest that if a mere human being could love an outcast, redeem her, and bring her into fellowship with himself, God could love all the outcasts of the world, redeem them, and bring them into fellowship with himself. Questions. One, what happened in Ruth 3 that set up the events of chapter 4? Two, why did Boaz go to the city gate and what did he do after he arrived there? Three, what was Boaz's final proposal to the other kinsmen? Four, how did Boaz make certain the other kinsmen understood that this was a legal transaction? Five, what additional fact did Boaz explain that caused the kinsman to rescind his offer to redeem Naomi's land? Six, how was the transaction sealed? Seven, what did this action mean? Eight, what were the two transactions that took place that day? Nine, how did Boaz reiterate to the witnessing elders that what they had seen was important? 10. What was the response of those witnessing this event? This concludes the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, June 30th, 2024. Thank you for listening. God bless.